Good morning, and we'll call to order the meeting of the Regional Transportation Commission. For the final time, <laughs> Ms. Quigley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Commission, your first item is to conduct your first citizen's participation period. It's the first time set aside for public comment. Those wishing to speak on a posted agenda item, now is your opportunity. On number... <clears throat> 47, Scott Mulrath. Okay. Apologize, Scott. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Chair and uh, members of the, of the RTC board and Tina Quigley as well. Uh, I'm Scott Mulrath, the President and CEO of the Henderson Chamber of Commerce, uh, an 1,800 member organization that really covers all of Southern Nevada now. Um, and here to speak in, on behalf of our organization in a strong vote of support in regards to the appointment of M.J. Maynard to the role of Chief Executive Off Officer for the Regional Transportation Commission. In her current position as the Deputy Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Maynard has demonstrated her comprehensive understanding of the region's transportation and planning needs. She has also established herself as a credible results-driven leader in this arena since joining the RTC in 2007. And I think one of the qualities that will serve the, the commission and the RTC very well is that MJ brings really a, a diverse uh, private sector background to a very public sector arena. And having been in that space myself, the decision-making process that one goes through and, and how to be a steward in the private and public sector, they're very different. And I think her experiences on both sides of that fence will be very well placed and well served uh, for the RTC. And for that reason, uh, we strongly support, uh, again, her, her position. As a stakeholder partner that frequently works together with our government and quasi-governmental entities, I can also assure you that Ms. Maynard is a reputable trailblazer that is dedicated to the mission of the RTC needs of our region and approaches complex issues in an innovative, collaborative, and different way. And I think as I, as I close my comments, uh, I've known MJ for, for quite some time in many capacities. Uh, she served on our boards, she's volunteered with our organization and served the community of Henderson uh, in so many different aspects as a volunteer and otherwise. And she's a good person. She's a really good person. And I think we all enjoy working with good people. And uh, she'll be a great steward with much fiduciary responsibility and is a, is a great choice uh, to lead this organization forward. So, thank you. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> Mr. John Ponder. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is John Ponder, founder and CEO of Hope for Prisoners. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak on the agenda item that will appoint MJ Maynard as CEO of the RTC. Uh, MJ Maynard has served on the Board of Hope for Prisons over the last several years, and her passion, her dedication, and the work uh, that she does in the community makes her a perfect fit for this role. At Hope for Prisons, you know, we work with men, women, and young adults who are re-entering into society. Uh, through long-term mentoring and counseling uh, and through uh, training. As a board member, uh, MJ truly understands what it means to be community-minded, transparent, and accountable. She's the voice that is often represents the, the vulnerable members of our community that often goes unnoticed. We are very proud to have the, such a tremendous leader on the board of Hope for Prisoners, and I'm sure that this board and our entire community will not be disappointed as she takes the helm at the RTC. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board on a posted agenda item? Good morning, board. Chair Brown, uh, Alita Dupree for the record, item 47. I come to you, as I've said before, as an ordinary public citizen who rides RTC. 
a person with various challenges and modern modest means and one who does not have an automobile. And I've been following this process. I've got no MJ and uh, MJ has been responsive to my concerns and an, attend an attentive listener who was generous with her time. So as I close here, as simply as an ordinary citizen who's come before this board, uh, that I believe that a vote in favor of this matter is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board on a posted agenda item? Seeing and hearing no one will close this portion of public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Your next item is item number two, which is to approve the agenda. Your agenda is in order and ready for your approval. Motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is to receive the CEO's report. And for this, I'm going to turn it over to our pending CEO. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> MJ Maynard. Thanks, Tina. <clears throat> so I'd like to begin today's CEO report by introducing our two new deputy CEOs. The first is a very familiar face to you already. David Swallow has been promoted to deputy CEO following Fred O'Haney's retirement, and I can't imagine a more capable individual to step into Dr. Fred's shoes. David joined the RTC in 2001 and possesses more than 25 years of experience in the transportation industry. He oversees the RTC's planning, engineering, and funding programs for transportation infrastructure, new technologies, and traffic management. Dave has, <clears throat> has overseen the construction of all major capital improvement projects, including the Bonneville Transit Center, Sunset Maintenance Facility, the South Strip Transfer Terminal, Centennial Hills Transit Center and Park and Ride, and Westcliff Transit Center. The second is likely familiar to you, too. Francis Julian joined us after most recently serving as Vice President of Western Region Operations for Keolis Transit America, where he managed operations for four transit agencies, including Southern Nevada's residential and resort quarter transit routes. He brings to the RTC significant experience in the public transit industry and will oversee management of the RTC's transit service, transit facilities and systems, and related departments. Francis has, has a keen understanding of advanced mobility initiatives and has embraced innovation to enhance transportation in our region through autonomous vehicles and microtransit pilots. Please join me in welcoming them both to the RTC in their new roles. <laughs> Gentlemen, have anything to say? Good decision. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'd like to recognize a mechanic from MV Transportation, Eduardo Valadez. Mr. Valadez? Mr. Valadez performs outstanding work on behalf of the MV maintenance team. Earlier this year, MV lost one of its seasoned powertrain techs, creating a gap between engine diagnostics and major overhaul work. With determination, Mr. Valadez jumped in and seamlessly filled the void, and then we discovered his knack for building engines when they underwent training. His hard work, enthusiasm, and focus to stay on task are great skills that lead to his invaluable contribution of the maintenance team. He has built 12 engines this year alone. Thank you, Eduardo Valadez, for your amazing talent and hard work. Um, thank you very much. I just, I just wanted to appreciate you know this recognition and thank you for your for believing in me. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God, you're already making me look inefficient. <laughs> Just you. Will. 
When Tina Cooley joined the RTC 14 years ago, our iconic double-decker bus had just launched. From that moment, the RTC has continued to transform mobility in Southern Nevada. Our agency has become known around the world for its forward-thinking attitude, and let me tell you, there's a lot of attitude, and innovative projects. That reputation is thanks to Tina's leadership and the amazing team she built during her time at the RTC. We are so proud of what the RTC has accomplished and achieved under Tina's leadership. We launched bus rapid transit and express routes to help local commuters. We built parking rides and new transit facilities. We added new residential routes in some of the fastest growing parts of the valley. We converted to more envir environmentally friendly CNG vehicles. And we passed fuel revenue indexing legislation and a ballot measure that enables us to meet our roadway and infrastructure needs. All this and more made us a national leader in testing and implementing advanced trans transportation technology that is changing the dynamics of mobility. I can't put into words, as you can tell, how much we all miss Tina at the RTC. The energy, let me say that again, the energy and optimism she brought to the agency has been an inspiration to us all. I'm honored to have had the opportunity to work for her and thank her for her support and collaboration. We're excited for her new chapter as she continues to lay the groundwork, or track in this case, for advanced transportation in Southern Nevada. We at the RTC look forward to partnering with Tina again as we all continue to improve mobility and the quality of life for all of those who visit us and those who call Southern Nevada home. But that's only how we feel. Tina, you made such a positive difference on everyone you met and worked with over the years. It's better if you hear straight from them. You always say that technology is the new asphalt, and I steal it from you all the time. And because of your investment in innovation in Nevada, traffic programs like Waycare, Nexar, and Audi, Time to Green, are making our roadways safer and less congested. And that's why I was so happy to have you come testify in the Senate and appear with you on panels to promote Nevada as the innovation state. Well, after 14 years of service at RTC, Tina leaves behind quite a legacy. It's one of encouraging innovation, improving safety, and uh, expanding access. She's been involved in some of Southern Nevada's biggest projects, whether it's fuel indexing or construction of I-11. She knows how to collaborate with everybody and get the best out of all of us, a quality leader. And uh, I think Tina has just done so much for the community with the collaboration she's been able to muster and also to be forward thinking, waiting for tomorrow and all the smart uh, communities efforts uh, that we've all been working on. But she has been the leader and Tina, I can't believe that we're not gonna be seeing you at that desk all the time every day with the passion that you have for transportation and life in Las Vegas. Tina has been so instrumental. I think that her relationships with all of the municipalities uh, has been uh, very valuable, and I think she's highly respected, highly regarded across the community, not just in the municipalities, uh, local governments, but also in the business community as well. And I think that's been very valuable because we're planning the future for all of our residents for Southern Nevada uh, for years to come. She went out there and over her career, established herself as uh, not only the face of the RTC, but brought so much credibility to her as a leader and as importantly to the RTC as a public agency. And you look at the fuel revenue index in the FRI program, not only the initial, but the follow-up when we went out to the community for a ballot initiative, uh, so critically important. It basically gave us uh, and now has given us the opportunity over the next 15 years to invest close to three billion dollars into our streets and highways. Uh, a really, I think, good thing to be able to say when a leader leaves that uh, the, the agency is in really good shape and in good hands. And while we're going to miss her she, because of her incredible talent and leadership skills and the knowledge that she's gained about transit, I mean, she's left us in a place where we can keep, keep really striving and succeeding. I've never been part of an organization that's so professionally run and well-managed. She obviously knows how to hire people and 
get them on board with her ideas and everybody's going the same direction. Then I-11 has been a cooperation between Arizona and Nevada as few things have been uh, such a cooperative enterprise. And so Tina has been at the helm and she's guided that ship and it has been uh, one of the transportation uh, successes that we have in Nevada and Arizona. So it's been a very cooperative thing and Tina's been at the helm of that and she's done a wonderful job. Kudos to you, Tina. Tina loves to collaborate. Uh, we have a lot of conversations around um, collaboration where um, I have less patience for that than she does and she'd remind me that it's hard to get things done if, uh, if that collaboration doesn't take place. Um, and that quality has served her well. RTC has so many stakeholders, um, whether that's other agencies, certainly citizens throughout the valley, businesses that are going to be impacted. Um, the, uh, the skill it takes and the patience it takes at times uh, to bring all of those groups together uh, to stay on a single focused track um, is uh, something that Tina brought uh, to RTC and has been to the benefit of the community. So we know that of course Tina has, uh, she's been doing a great job doing lots of big projects with the fuel indexing and all this, right? But what's sometimes not seen is she always took the time to take care of small projects that although they might be small on the grand scale of things, for a few people, it made all the difference in the world. And for that, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna really miss Tina. And so she, uh, she really has done a tremendous amount uh, for this community. I think the experience that she had at the airport uh, and then the experience and what she did at the RTC uh, really speaks to what somebody can do when they focus and, and apply their energy. So I have great admiration for uh, Tina, her leadership, uh, and it really speaks well to her new endeavors that lie, lie in front of her. You'll hear, if you've worked around Tina for any amount of time, you'll hear her say, uh, disrupt or be disrupted, and boy is that true. And she's done so much in the innovation space just based on that mindset. And, and two, I think you've heard her say that technology is a new asphalt. And I now hear um, other folks in the industry quoting Tina Quigley um, because she's really been, she's been out, uh, out in an area that most agencies were afraid to go, were uncomfortable being in. So uh, she's pretty amazing. She's been an outstanding leader in that regard, helping push the boundaries of what we do and what we think are our priorities and expanding our view towards transportation altogether. She would always tell us, if it's not you, then who? And if it's not now, then when? So if I had to summarize her leadership skills, is she was incredibly passionate, and, um, dynamic, inspirational, innovative, and a fearless, fearless leader. Yeah, what I like about uh, Tina is her um, ability to get things done. If there's something she wants to do, she'll make a way to get it done and get staff energized and, and, and figure out how to do it. So it's wonderful. She creates a great dynamic environment to work in, and uh, I really enjoy that. I really took seriously my role of uh, working for her, trying to be five steps ahead of her, which of course is not always easy. Um, but. Uh, very loyal to who she is and what she's done for this agency, for staff, for the community. Um, just really, she's an amazing woman. I've been really lucky to work for her. my crying out yesterday, so I'm going to try really hard to not, not cry right now. Um, I have been so lucky and so blessed. I want, to, I want to start with the board in saying thank you, because um, Larry, from the very beginning when we were having conversations about me maybe becoming the 
general manager at the time, you, you said, Tina, I don't really know you, but I think you have the ability, and your job is to go out and become the face of the community and become integrated and known in the community and start doing stuff. And I took that to heart. And those were the greatest, that was the greatest direction that you could have given somebody in my role because in the end, this agency doesn't really have a lot of authority or teeth to get anything done. It becomes, it's very, very clear that the only way this agency becomes a success is becoming a partner with the entire community. So whether it's the jurisdictions that you all represent or the chambers or large business, small business, contractors, um, our role, and I, it became clear after a while, our role is to be a partner with all those people because no matter how big our goals or ambitions or visions are, we can't get it done without, without them. So that was the best advice that you could have given me. Deborah, you believed in me from the very beginning. I, um, I know MJ feels very nervous as she takes on this role, and I assure you, MJ, that's, that is how I felt as well. It's overwhelming and scary because you don't want to fail, right? You don't want to disappoint. But you were an advocate of mine from, from the very beginning. Carolyn, when you came on the board, oh, you've been a champion of mine and our agency since the very beginning. You always made us feel like we could do this, right? That we had this. Um, and when you, when you guys believe in us, and Isaac, thank you for, from the very beginning. I just did one little tiny thing for you and you were just so grateful. We got you a bus, it was just not a big deal, but Isaac was so, it's like you, we formed a relationship after that. You, you, you trusted me and believed in me too. And to our newer members, I'm sorry that I don't get to spend more time with you as I move on, but I assure you that uh, I'm going to be leaving you in amazing hands and people who understand the role of the RTC and its importance in being a partner in the community. And our, our mantra is we never, ever say no, ever, right away. We always listen to you and we always try to get to yes. There'll be times where we'll have to modify in order to get to yes, but I assure you, I, as I leave, this agency will be as committed as ever to helping you get to yes with your, your goals and your constituents. I want to um, thank the board as well because, you know, there's a certain amount of magic that comes from the deference and trust that you gave me. Larry, you, you were always there as my chair to guide me, but you... And Deborah, you guys let us go do our own thing. You believed in us. And it's interesting. It's like it's the human condition when you have a boss or bosses who believe in you and say, go do it. We'll step out of the way. You go, you go do it. When they, and you know they've got your back, it gives you a different level of confidence and a different level of ability to engage in risk or to be adventurous or aggressive. So your gift to me in that sense, was a gift that I then, I feel like, was able to give the rest of the RTC staff, the executive team here. I hope that you guys all felt like, and Francis, I'm sorry we didn't get to listen more together. But I think that that, that, that trust permeates down into the staff and into the culture and allowed us to be more confident, again, and aggressive in pursuing our our visions and our goals. So I owe you a lot. I, I, I feel like we accomplished a lot while I was here. And we did it because you guys let go and let us go do it. And you always had my back. God, and I, there were some really tough times every now and then. And you guys covered for me. So I just want to say thank you for that. And um, I think you already know it and you've heard, I'm sure, from plenty of your, your constituents and stakeholders that MJ Maynard is very much the right choice to continue to lead this. Um, even though on an organizational chart she worked for me, I assure you that we were peers and that I learned a lot from her. She is an amazing manager of humans, an amazing communicator. She has an uncanny ability to establish rapport and deliver harsh, harsh me or deliver firm messages, but do it in a very respectful way. Um, that builds loyalty, and I learned that from you. So I learned so much from so many of the people that I've worked with, so. It's hard to leave, but I have to do it for personal growth. I've been in government for 30 years, and I'm, I'm not getting any younger, so if I wanna 
if I want to try my hand at something new, I have to do it now. But it is very hard to go. So thank you for your gift that you gave me um, of believing in myself. Thanks. That's all I have to say. Tina, you're going to be missed. We love you, and we love the leadership that you brought to this organization. And um, there were a couple of things. I'm not going to restate the many things that you've accomplished that MJ has called out, other than to say that you were a real champion of Southern Nevada Strong, and that really meant a lot to us that you saw the regional needs and, and took a bigger picture of the community, and we appreciate that. But on behalf of the 317,000 residents of Henderson, <laughs> I'm, I'm one of them. So <laughs> pleased to declare today, Tina Quigley. Ah! Yes. Oh my gosh! I can't wait to tell my kids. Yeah, and today's and Tina Quigley Day. Street sign. <laughs> <laughs> so. right. Tina's a Henderson resident. Oh yeah. Oh, you. Get to the sign. Yeah, roundabouts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your leadership. <laughs> Thank you. I want to ask my kids, why did you have to go to school today? Didn't they know it was Tina Quigley today? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, everyone is roundabout. We'll get you another one. Awesome. <laughs> That concludes your general manager's report. <laughs> We'd all add comments, Tina, but MJ oh. has indicated that we can't talk too long. <laughs> so. We can't what? You can't they talk can't too talk long. long. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. That, that parkway, oh. that is going to be a speed trap. She's got a lead foot. <laughs> okay. So wait, am I still doing it or you want to do it? I think you should do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. So um, thank you. Chairman, members of the commission, your next item is item number four, which is to receive the Nevada Department of Transportation Director's Report. Wow, I don't quite know how I go after that, and it feels like such a downer where I'm starting. But, um, <laughs> no promises. Uh, so as I've been doing and will continue to do, uh, we'll start with you know talking about safety on our on our roadway network. Uh, we are still tracking well in advance of last year in terms of total fatalities, but um, as of the end of September, we'd already lost 215 people on our roadways, and as we know, we lost another um, this morning on our network, and um, that's 216 at least, because it's a few days into the month already. Um, too many. Too many. There are some positive signs in that we have seen pedestrian fatalities are down um, by 16%, so that's really good. And unrestrained occupant fatalities are also down by 46%. But as we think about this, it's also important to recognize that um, it's dark now. With the time change, it's dark now. And, um, and with seasons, right? It just, it's getting darker. And we all just need to be safe in terms of how we use the roads. There are certainly things we can do about on how we design our roads. But each and every one of us, as we get out and get into our car or we go out for a run in the morning, we all share the responsibility of keeping our roads safe. I, um, and so we need, to, we need to think about that in every aspect of how we engage with our transportation system. I, I think I'd be remiss if I, didn't actually, if I didn't talk at all to wrong way driving, uh, given the crash that happened this morning. Uh, wrong way driving is definitely a challenge across the nation and something that we at NDOT are working to address. We actually have experimental approval through federal highways to uh, deploy some new wrong way driver systems and we're working on deploying um, one of those at uh, the Durango interchange. Um, all, the, all the equipment's there but it's just not quite live yet so it's going to be going live. In the meantime, um, 
And we're also working to install um, currently approved systems in other locations. Um, the one that will go on at Durango will, when triggered, um, send a note, an alert to our ops center, which we partner with FAT, at FAST, um, and let um, them know that it, there's been a triggering event so they can look at it and determine if we need to uh, contact NHP to respond or you know, another um, agency, in this case it would be Durango, so NHP. Um, to hopefully get to, if the person misses the alert, if the driver misses the alert, then there'll at least be um, law enforcement out there trying to stop and make sure everybody's safe on the road. So we're working on deploying some new systems um, to keep people safe on our network. More along the safety um, piece, uh, last, last month we teamed up with our um, law enforcement partners on the STOP uh, DUI organization to designate State Route 157 or Kyle Canyon Road the DUI Victim Memorial Highway. Um, this also coincided with a milestone for the DUI strike team and, um, and it was a, a very impactful event as you can imagine because it was the families out there who were, um, their family members were victims of DUI. And uh, as, far as, we under as far as we know, we've done some research, this is I think the only DUI Victim Memorial Highway um, in the nation. We have a sign uh, at the bottom of Kyle Canyon Road, uh, so as you're heading north, you'll see it, and we have one again at the top, so as you're heading back off the mountain, hopefully it will remind anybody who had maybe a good time or too much of a good time on the mountain to not drive impaired and, and to think about the impacts of that choice. Um, so. Um, again, just trying to make sure we remind everyone that there is engineering involved, there's enforcement, but there's also our own private personal actions. Do we put on our belt? Do we give the keys to somebody else? You know, what do we do to make sure we keep the system safe? All right, uh, Tropicana Interchange. Uh, you've heard me talk about this a few times. Uh, this time I'm, I'm just letting you all know that on Tuesday, so next Tuesday the 19th, we'll be hosting what I hope to be is the final public hearing on the NEPA study for the Tropicana um, interchange, including the Harmon HOV ramp, sorry, Tina. Um, <laughs> uh, so we are getting much, much closer to the NEPA approval. Once we have that NEPA approval, then we'll be able to begin the full design with the right-of-way acquisition and um, get closer to the construction of the project. As you may remember, we're, um, we're in addition to the HOV ramps at Harmon, we're also looking at lengthening the span of the bridge so we can, in the future, add capacity to I-15. That is not part of this project, um, but we're also addressing the congestion on Tropicana itself by addressing um, the signalized intersections and making it all overall um, reducing, hopefully to reduce the bottlenecks that we have at that location and make it safer for folks traveling on I-15 and on Tropicana. Centennial Bowl, uh, you may have heard, it's exciting. We are at the halfway point of the second long longest bridge in the state. I was just asking this morning, like, what's the longest one? I don't have the answer, I'm, I'm gonna find that out. Is it the Galena? Oh, okay, that's what I was wondering, but um, so the second longest bridge, it's up there. If you drive in the Northwest Corridor, you're seeing it go up and, and it's exciting. And I'm actually working, I asked the team, I'm, I'm hoping to get, um, invite some of you up there so you can do a tour. If you haven't been on one of these bridges during construction, it's pretty incredible. So we're working on trying to figure out something if you're interested um, to see what that's like um, and see how transformative it will be for the community. And then, you've, I, we've heard it from you, you've seen them around the country, there's all sorts of really cool safety messages on the DMS signs across the nation, and we have been working to get there. We had some hurdles we had to go through with our Federal Highways partners, but we finally got through those hurdles so that we can also start putting out some, some cuter messages that maybe resonate with everybody and, and they think about them a little bit more. The first one came out last month. We actually got some really good positive feedback and media on it, um, uh, texting and driving, oh, sell no, uh, just to make sure that people know, you, know, you, can't, you can't drive with, and text at the same time. Uh, we have, um, we partner with, um, so all the messages have to be safety related. Any message that we put up there, we have to, it has to be safety related. We partner with um, uh, all the, the NDOT districts, RTC FAST, uh, traffic operations, our traffic safety engineering and public information to approve any message that goes up there. Again, wanting to make sure if somebody sees something on there, they know it's, a, it's safety related. Uh, there are already, 
I think, hundreds of messages approved that um, can be deployed. But we partner with FAST, as I mentioned. They put them up. They choose which messages go up at the appropriate times. And I just wanted to give you a couple that might be coming. I can't promise they will because, again, partnership, and it depends on what's going on on the roads. Um, and I'm going to go backwards because um, the second one is the one. The one I tell you second, I like that one even better. But the first one is, you know, only reindeer can fly. Watch your speed. Uh, maybe at Christmas, so we might do that one, but um, hope maybe even sooner than that for Thanksgiving, another approved message is keep your stuffing on the inside. Buckle up. So, um, so we, have, um, we have some already kind of cute ones. I don't know if we'll ever use um, May the 4th because I've, I've seen that in other places. Um, but the other piece of this, and uh, just as a, we are interested in hearing from the public. So if, if you have something that you think is catchy and people would, it would resonate with people and would help them understand the safety message, please, by all means, send me the information because I um, want to make sure that I, I, I started this, this started with all of us have a role to play. Sometimes a cute little catchy message helps resonate with us and we do it better. So happy to be finally deploying those. Uh, we have, um, you, may re uh, you may have heard uh, Mary Martini, our District 1 engineer, uh, retired uh, back in uh, late August, early September. And uh, we have been able to fill that position. Many of you probably have worked with Mario Gomez. He has been in our district for, I believe, 17 years down here in Las Vegas working, or 19 years, actually. And um, he's been the assistant district engineer for many of those. He is um, taking the helm. The announcement was made official on Tuesday of this week. He will be the new district engineer and will manage in that role 500 uh, of our team members. And uh, the network of District 1 is 1,900 miles of, of over 5,400. Uh, 5, so he has, a, he has a big job to do, and we have full faith and confidence that he'll be able to do it. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to him as well. And then lastly, um, I did just want to have one slide to, you know, thank you, Tina. Um, the, you, you have helped grow the partnership with NDOT and really helped us together with uh, uh, RTC get our community moving and really leverage our federal funding. You were an incredible advocate for fuel revenue indexing, um, which has brought not just money to Southern Nevada, but I mean, it's also money to Southern Nevada, but money so that the state can invest more money in Southern Nevada, $14 million already for state funds, additional funds for Clark County, which is awesome. And you, and, you were, and you were innovative in your thinking about how we might be able to leverage that money better and leverage the federal funds in and, and getting this particular project done and advancing it faster than it might have been otherwise. You have truly been an advocate and a partner, and um, we appreciate it, and we're going to miss it. And we're going to look forward to continuing you know, the groundwork that you put, continuing the relationship with MJ as we move forward. So thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you. Comments or questions? Mr. Chairman. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Director Swallow, that was a, a great report. Um, I just uh, want to thank again and, and uh, make sure that the public uh, recognizes just how uh, I, I really look forward to uh, the technology and the high-tech approach you know, to safety. But uh, I, I don't think we can um, understate the low-tech approach um, that, of course, uh, uh, NDOT and some of the partners have done in improving safety, for instance, in North Las Vegas along uh, the North Las Vegas Boulevard uh, corridor there with the decorative um, fence barriers that go on the medians. Um, now, uh, there various agencies have spent a ton of money, for instance, building these pedestrian bridges that, of course, you know, also add to the trail system, but getting people to use them, I'll tell you what, you know, it, it's, it's been, you'll see people literally uh, in the shadow of these bridges jaywalk across and you know making things difficult making things dangerous for them the pedestrians also for the uh for, for the drivers um and uh i'm very happy to see uh these decorative uh barriers that uh not only enhance and uh, give a little bit of a, a spruce to this area especially in my area that needs a little bit of sprucing up but i think it's going to really um enhance the safety in the area we see some new ones coming up uh, uh, on Civic Center. And uh, they also, I don't know if you uh, uh, realize this, but uh, uh, when it comes to the intersections where you have those barriers, I think it's going to um, cut down on people who um, solicit um, donations, 
who, and they use those medians from which to launch into stop traffic, which is of course incredibly dangerous for them and uh, quite frankly for uh, other pedestrians. So uh, I, I think it's gonna have a, a dual um, a, a use and uh, again, uh, I, I think uh, uh, NDOT for uh, all their vision and making these things happen and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the impact. Uh, I'm sure you'll be taking track of uh, reported accidents in the area, especially after you put these in. And uh, I look very much forward to seeing uh, forced uh, safety uh, uh, in, in, in public settings like this. Okay, that brings us to your consent agenda, which is made up of items five through 46 and may be taken in one motion. There's a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. That brings us to item number 47 and our outside general counsel, Greg Gilbert, will introduce that item. Uh, good morning, item 47. On October 10th, 2019, the board uh, voted to approve uh, Ms. M.J. Maynard as the next chief executive officer of the RTC and directed legal counsel to negotiate the terms of Ms. Maynard's employment agreement through the ex execution of the employment agreement that's attached to the agenda item. Negotiations are complete and it's recommended that the employment agreement between Ms. Maynard and the RTC be approved. One thing of note that I'd like to bring to your attention that is that Ms. Maynard uh, 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 requested and we agreed that her salary not be increased uh, in her capacity in this new position. Just want to uh, bring that to the board's attention. I think that's uh, extremely generous given the situation, but she feels that it's important to maintain her current salary, and I just commend her on making that decision. With that said, the agreement remains very similar, if not identical, to Ms. Quigley's agreement in form and function, and it is ready for your approval. Comments or questions from the board? Um, I just want to say, again, it's a tribute to uh, the leadership that um, our outgoing CEO has left in place, that we have a strong bullpen, uh, next person up, and I'm, and I'm sure that uh, we will not miss a beat. And uh, she, uh, I know Ms. Maynard has my full faith and confidence. I will say this. Um, there'll be... I hesitate to use big shoes, right? Because that didn't, no, she's, a, she's not that kind of person, you know. Big jersey. Yeah, big jersey, a, there'll be a big jersey to fill. But you know, um, quite frankly, uh, she's a one of, kind of, of a kind, kind of person. I'll say this, she might have a huge jersey that she's leaving behind, but I think you're gonna have a jersey of your own, a separate and independent. And uh, I look forward to your own unique style of, of, of leadership. So thank you very much, and thank you. Council, uh, this morning at Regional Flood, we uh, set up our subcommittee to evaluate Mr. Parrish's performance. Traditionally, those have been side by side, February. So <laughs> if it's not in the contract, could we put on the record that we'll roll MJs from, I guess, a 15 month? So ideally, we'd like to have them on that February date. We'll, we'll make note of that and have that be the review date. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve the contract. Motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. MJ. Yes. Is it appropriate that the former CEO be at the same table? <laughs> <laughs> Big, <laughs> All right. Big shoes to fill indeed. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Great team though, honestly. The team of the RTC is a dream team and I'm fortunate to, uh, to take the helm of, of uh, again, working with such amazing people. So thank you for your support. Okay, so we will move on to uh, the next agenda. I'm actually, Mark Trostall, RTC's uh, finan Chief Financial Officer, will present item, agenda items 48, 49, and 50. Mark? Thank you, MJ. Um, item 48 is to receive the fiscal year 2019 audited financial statements. 
Item 49 is to receive the fiscal year 2019 single audit compliance report regarding our grant funds expended. And item 50 is to receive a report for the audit procedures performed on fuel revenue indexing for fiscal year 2019. Items 48, 49, and 50 can all be taken in one motion after our independent auditor's reports. At this time, I'd like to introduce Brad Shell, Managing Director with Crow CPAs, to present these reports and answer any questions. Very good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the board. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak for a few minutes this morning. Uh, just wanted to give a few highlights um, before I begin going through the audit report, um, wanted to take the time to express my appreciation to uh, the entire management team for their significant efforts. I, I know it takes a lot of time and energy to go through the entire audit process and prepare the financial statements and the reports that you have before you today. So uh, thank them for their efforts in that area. Um, a little bit of background about us as a firm, Crow, we, we work with a lot of public transit agencies across the country, um, including some of the largest, uh, LA Metro, MARTA, um, DART, WMATA. So we have a lot of experience and a lot of visibility to how different organizations run and some of the things that they do. Um, and there are a few things that really, I think, stand out uh, in a positive way for you all. Um, so just wanted to mention a few of those things. One is, as it relates to the audit process, just the efficiency and the preparedness of, uh, of the team um, as we go through that process, as I mentioned, is a significant effort and it doesn't always go as smoothly as it does uh, here at RTC. So uh, that's one thing to be proud about. Um, also think, have good financial internal controls in place. Um, in, in instances in the past where I maybe had a recommendation, you know, management is always very willing and, and eager to make improvements. Um, they're always wanting to know what is the best way that we can do things. Are there other things that we see across other agencies? And I think that's really a good attitude to have going into that process. Um, just in general, the finance team is, you know, is very active in the government space and in the transit space and, and do a lot of networking with other transit agencies, again, to try to bounce ideas off each other, get uh, best practices, things like that. And I think just very forward thinking in general, um, you know, the, the fleet CNG conversion that provides a significant amount of, of cost uh, um, from the fuel standpoint. And, and so those types of things allow you to use that money uh, elsewhere and, and continue your operations or in, improve your operations. Um, I know the paratransit uh, mobility training center is a few years old now, but I, that is something that we were able to tour and um, is something that just you know, state-of-the-art facility uh, compared to what we have seen with some of the other places. So, um, and I think the last thing related to paratransit costs, one thing that we've noticed as we've worked with other agencies again is that your costs per trip there are in some cases significantly less uh, than what we're seeing at other places. Uh, and I know I've often had questions from other agencies that we work with on how do they get their costs so low? How do they negotiate such a good contract? And I don't have the answer on that, but I, I just, I know that uh, they've done a great job with that. And, and that uh, again, any of those cost savings that you're able to do allows you to do so many other things. Um, so I just wanted to point out those things. And I think the last thing I'd point out there is just, we are, as you may know, we're also auditing the county um, at this point uh, for the first time this year. And, RTC is always one of the first ones to be done through the audit process and, and really what that um, allows you to do is they understand the responsibilities as part of the county, as a component unit of the county and the importance of getting those financials prepared on time uh, so the county can have that information. As far as the reports themselves, I know you have those in front of you. Won't go through those. Um, there's a lot of pages and a lot of numbers to look at. Uh, so if you had any questions, I'm glad to answer any of those. Uh, a few things I wanted to point out uh, is on the financial statements, there's, there's really the three documents that we're providing, the, the basic financial statements. And on those, we are issuing an unqualified opinion or a clean audit opinion, so the highest level of assurance we can provide. Uh, so again, to be commended, that's a good way to go out is a, with a clean audit report. Um, the other report that we provide is a single audit report. 
that is related to your federal grants and uh, the compliance over those federal grants. And there were no issues of any kind of non-compliance there. Uh, we also issue a gas report, a government auditing standards report along with that. And again, no issues of any non-compliance or findings there to report so clean as well in both of those. The last report is the FRI uh, agreed upon procedures uh, testing that we do and the report that we provide for that. And again, a clean, there were no concerns or exceptions based on the testing that we did. Um, all the FRI revenues were properly accounted for and, and all of the funds were utilized uh, as based on the board approved FRI projects. So again, very clean from all three reports and uh, I thank you again for the the assistance and the help throughout the process, and I open up if you have any questions for me. Thank you. Comments or questions? Sneak preview of the county's work? Do you want to? Uh, I, I can't say yeah. We're not right. completely done, don't, but I, don't I hope say so. It. Yeah. Unless it's good news, don't say it. <laughs> uh, and we're taking all three, Mark, in one motion. Uh, entertain a motion. So moved. Motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Thank you very much, have a good day. Chair Red, if I may, I just wanna acknowledge the finance team that spent seven days a week coming in before work, stayed after work uh, for this. So if Sherwin and his team, if you wanna stand Let's up. Let's have them stand up, yeah. please. Sherman, what kind of tie do you have on? All right, you have the lanyard, which is, is that New England Patriots? Okay, just, just, just wondering. The name of his tie is Mixed Emotions, Chairman. Mixed Emotions. Congratulations, Mark, to you and the team. Uh, there's no need for the next agenda item 51, no legal matters to discuss with the board, so we will move on to your last agenda item, which is your, is to conduct your last citizen's participation. It's the second time set aside for public comment. Those wishing to speak to the board, now is your opportunity. Please state your name for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Aaron, first out of the gates. Good to have you here. And thank you for all the work you continue to do as far as the safety. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure to be here today. I believe, um, sorry, for the record, my name is Erin Breen. I am the director of the Vulnerable Road Users Project in the Transportation Research Center at UNLV. It's quite the mouthful. Um, I believe the last time I was in front of your board was when I came to encourage you to promote Tina into the position that she leaves today. Kind of emotional for me. I adore this woman. Um, I know. It's, I was hoping that after all the Tina stuff that this, I wouldn't do this. Um, Tina Quigley is an amazing woman that has um, made our community better every day. It's been my incredible pleasure to not only work with Tina, but her entire team. I look at these faces like they're my coworkers because we do so much together. And the RTC is a jewel in the, our community. It, you know, you say that you have no power, but your power lies in the people that run this organization, that are part of this organization. Um, I would have never ever said that anyone on this team works for Tina Quigley. I would have all said they work with Tina Quigley. And what an amazing cheerleader she is. So, you know, as part of my job at the university, at one point, um, when everybody was talking about doing this rail to California, um, I got to kind of moderate a series of open houses. And um, all I can say, Tina Quigley, is they need you. Um, if this is ever gonna be a reality, you're the person to get it done. And um, so when I first heard Tina was leaving, of course, as a human being, my first reaction was how it was gonna affect me. Um, <laughs> because we do so much together and she's been so incredibly generous to me. Um, I always say, Tina has me sit on these committees that I always feel like the emperor has no clothes kind of committee. Um, so, you know, that my first reaction was, oh dear. Um, but then my second reaction was that whoever was gonna take your place would be extremely well qualified because that's who you are. 
And um, I could not be more thrilled to have MJ be taking over. So um, as you pass the baton, I didn't even have to urge them to, to promote you, my friend. Um, we're all in good hands on our community, and I, I, it's, it's representative of the board and the job that you do and the quality of people that, that you recognize their strengths. So um, from the bottom of my heart for trying to uh, do the best that we all can for keeping people alive in our city, um, kudos to you, my friend, and can't wait to see what the future brings, MJ, and to all of you at the RTC. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to be, to be a partner with you all the time. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ern. Jean, Jean Payton. And thank you for all the work you do on behalf of the RTC. Thank you. Um, my name is Jean Payton, and today I'm here representing Blind Connect which is a nonprofit that partners and has partnered forever with RTC. We are in the MTC in Angela's house because of the generosity and the trust that the agency placed in our organization. Um, I need to thank Tina. You've been wonderful to work with. Thank you. And MJ, we are excited. We're here to continue to partner with you to do those exciting new projects, to take your, cover your back, to do whatever you need. Um, we love RTC, we love the, everything that goes on, so thank you so much for allowing me to speak, to thank both ladies, and to thank you for making a choice that I think will be a wonderful one for the community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. From Keolis, Clement, Michael? In France, we'd say Michel, uh, Clement Michel. I'm the president and CEO for Keolis in North America. Uh, uh, it's really uh, an honor and an emotional day. Uh, I'm going to mumble a little bit. Um, I'm uh, based in Boston uh, um, and, uh, and uh, flew uh, here yesterday to, uh, uh, to say how uh, we are proud to serve this community. Um, I joined public transport because I wanted to make a difference to the communities we serve, to uh, uh, work for public transport agencies, and, uh, and I have to say there is not one like this in the, in the nation, uh, one that cares uh, uh, for, uh, for the communities we serve, inclusion, uh, uh, making a difference, innovation. Uh, under Tina's leadership, you've been uh, uh, tremendous. I have lots of notes, but then I just heard everybody saying them uh, uh, too. I know it's going to, uh, to carry on. Uh, uh, MJ, uh, congratulations. Uh, um, um, I was in Qatar a couple of weeks ago. I, was, uh, I lived in Australia in the past, uh, my accent betrays my uh, my Frenchness, uh, and um, uh, um, I can see here uh, things can be done, uh, um, and uh, and it's really really impressive. So so uh, congratulations for that. The team is excellent. We have Francis joining the team now. Uh, it's probably the the best compliment we can uh, we can have as a company uh, to say that uh, we want to partner with the communities we serve and having one of ours uh, joining the community. Uh, uh, so congratulations to, uh, to you too, uh, David, Angela, Mark. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, really, uh, it's really an honor. Uh, uh, contract success, it's because uh, uh, we're never as good as our clients are. Uh, um, so so uh, uh, working for the best, uh, most innovative uh, 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 PTA, public transport agency in the, in the nation is, uh, is really a, a subject of uh, great pride. Um, yeah, I've got lots of other things, but uh, I'll leave it to that. Thank you so much. And from Transdev, Dwayne Eskierka. Not a good day for names, I apologize. Well, it's always fun to do this when everyone's already said what you were gonna say, so let's, uh, let's learn together what I'm gonna say. Um, in our industry right now, we're going through the most disruptive period that, that we've had, and I think that uh, as a leader of this industry for over 25 years, it's much easier to go into a situation when something's broken. Tina's not handing something over that's broken. 
what MJ is challenged with now, and I could have 10 years ago listed in three minutes all of the entities and companies and people that are involved in our space. Today, it would take me hours, whether it's Google, Volvo, Uber, Lyft. Uh, uh, these, all these people are very anxious. We're suddenly chic. Everybody wants to be involved in the people movement part, right? So we have to have people with vision, collaborative skills, not as the term has been used all day, but in a way that figures out how we can partner with these companies that are coming in. They're, you're, it's unstoppable. The migration of the people that are using our services, vital services, fabric of our community services, you, if you want to stay relevant, if you want to stay at the leadership table, you have to figure out how to partner and collaborate with these folks because they're coming. And MJ, let me tell you, about three or four years ago, and I don't re remember which term I used, and, and, I, and, and I apologize for that, but you'll understand very quickly why. She was pretty excited sharing an idea she had. And I think I said, that's not the way you do it, or we can't do that. The next 30 or 40 minutes were not pleasant. That's not how MJ operates. And the industry as a whole needs these types of visionary. In one part, what stays in Vegas, you know, or happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, this can't be the case. Other agencies are looking at her, at you, uh, to do what, you know, what we need to do next and for the future. And I, even though uh, Mr. Howland, who's doing a masterful job of transitioning my company to MV, uh, and he's trying to expedite it, but I will tell you he's doing a fantastic job, um, that doesn't stop our interaction or our collaboration with this agency because you guys are thought leaders. And whether I can take an idea that MJ develops or tests or tries out to another customer, I want to be a part of that. So MJ, you're my friend, but you're also a colleague. And I wish both professionals tremendous success and, and we'll be back, as my former governor uh, said. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Stephanie Versnick. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Stephanie Versnick, and I'm speaking before you for the 21st time. Let me repeat that, 21st time. I'm asking this commission to expand the service area. I'm here on behalf of my son, Christian Versnick. Christian works at the Nellis Air Force Base Commissary. He's worked very hard to earn his seniority at the commissary. He is the fifth employee at the commissary that has been there the longest, 16 years. He has received numerous awards, both monetary and several employees of the month. Christian is very fortunate. He doesn't need to rely on Social Security or Medicaid. He makes a livable wage as a government employee and has his own health dental and vision insurance, and a great retirement plan. Christian has accomplished more than most adults do in their lifetime. My son is a hard worker and loves his job. He is definitely a success story. Diagnosed at 15 months with autism, I was told to put him in an institution. The doctors told me he'd never be able to do anything for himself. He had no language till the age of seven. Fast forward, today he is totally independent and does everything for himself except drive, which is why I'm here. Paratransit is his only option for transportation, the only resource he has. Believe me, if there was another option, I would have taken it by now. I'm not moving out of my forever home. I'm a half a mile outside the service area. It's so ridiculous, I actually leave my job to pick up my son from the Centennial Library. And I drive seven minutes to get him home while I'm following the bus that just dropped him off. Then I go back to work. Quite honestly, I don't understand how this commission can continue to approve millions of dollars on tourist transportation, 
but we can't expand the service area to give more people with disabilities access to transportation. It's a shame that this commission's priority is not on the people that actually live in and work in this community. This commission needs to understand that they are not meeting the needs of this community. Members of our community who are tax paying citizens and registered voters, like my son, has no transportation. If I'm not here to drive him to work, he would lose his job, a federal job he's held for over 16 years. His benefits would go away. He would be unemployed. Everything he has worked so hard for would be gone. That's not fair. He doesn't deserve that. No one does. I've been testifying every month for the last 21 months. But what I don't understand is what purpose does it serve to testify every month when nothing changes? Can someone tell me how I can get transportation for my son? It is not this commission, is it not this commission's job to listen and act to meet the needs of this community? I'm not going away. My son deserves to have transportation. It's his right. Do the right thing, members of this commission. Expand the service area. In closing, I heard this earlier on the video when we were saying goodbye to Tina. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Chair Brown members, Alita Dupree for the record. <laughs> Keep forgetting about the speaker cards. Um, thank you, good meeting. I love a good public meeting, can't seem to get enough of them. So uh, we're gonna continue uh, this work. We have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm gonna throw a little NDOT piece out here. Uh, as one who doesn't have a car, I'm having people drive me around and I've gotten to use the HOV lane on several occasions and I've been on the 15 at 10.30 at night and rush hour traffic. So I think we need to advocate for keeping the uh, HOV lane 24 seven. Um, I think still we have to keep working on the fare collection. Uh, anecdotally, I heard about, I was on a Sahara bus and we picked up a whole bunch of people from another bus and I heard that that bus that was put out of service was because of a defective fare box and uh, something about eating uh, somebody's pass. So uh, this uh, paper ticket uh, issue is really showing its age to the point where it's inconveniencing people. So uh, that's got to change. And another thing that we have to work on and aim towards zero is pass ups. It's only happened to me twice, but last month I was passed up. Uh, staff addressed it, I made the phone call, but no one should ever be passed up by uh, a vehicle it's called driver inattention. And if a driver isn't paying attention to the bus stop, then who knows what else. So we have to work toward perfection in that area because our most precious cargo is our people. Uh, there are four ways that I give you money. One is in when I spend money on taxable items, you get three eighths of a percent of that, which it's not enough. And then I pay you fares for the buses through various period passes. Uh, the passes that I use for the shared bike system and for the trip the strip which I used to get here this morning. Uh, all of those three of which I use apps for. And so they are all methods that I am being served with the challenges that I have among other things like the uh, Veterans Transportation Network. And uh, though I am a resident, I also avail myself of the strip and other things that visitors come to. So the visitors are an important eng engine of this economy and they pay federal income taxes, which helps pay for my stuff. And so we have to grow that and have transit oriented development and bring more people here. It's gonna require in innovation and a strong stomach 
Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Good morning, Raymond. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, outgoing CEO, incoming CEO. For the record, my name is Raymond Fletcher. I want to come in, share my support of Tina as well as she moves on to other endeavors. We met about six years ago when I had just moved here. First six weeks I was here, I couldn't believe that my wheelchair got broke on one of the routes. You know, I had spent majority of my life fighting to be treated as an equal, fighting to have my voice heard. And you were the one of the very first people I've encountered here in Southern Nevada who treated me like a person and not the disabled guy we talked down to. You know, we had a conversation about that as well, you know, and it still resonates with me today. I am truly thankful for your service here at this organization. I am truly thankful for all the information you've provided for me. You've made sure that I was informed. I learned a lot. I mean, I wouldn't even know anything about Tango Car because of the conversations that we had about Lyft and Uber being in, inaccessible for people with mobility devices. I don't believe I would also have the opportunities I had to have today had it not been for you and what you've done. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. MJ, I look forward to working with you. We've developed a good rapport over these past few years. I hope we continue it on to the future. And to the board, I want to thank you for item 46. Previously, I served on your bus shelter committee and now as a member of your TAC committee. I thank you for that opportunity. I look forward to serving. Mr. Chairman, you had asked one of the members of the public to attend one of the TAC committees, and unfortunately, they chose not to. So as a member of the committee, I'm going to put my committee hat on and just ask four questions for the record. Prior to people moving, did they know that they were grandfathered into the paratransit service area? Did they look at the service area before they moved? If not, why didn't they do their due diligence? And how much longer are they going to continue to blame this board for the actions that they willingly made? Again, as many of you all know, I moved across the country. I came to a place that was accessible by a bus route. I moved since being here, and I have access both north and south, east and west, because it's my responsibility as a person with a disability to do my due diligence. We need to stop blaming people for the choices we make and hold ourselves accountable for our failures to do what is right for ourselves and those that we care about. Thank you so very much to this board. Continue doing on great things. Like I said, I look forward to working with you. And again, thank you so very much for all of your hard work. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Seeing and hearing no one will close this portion of public comment. Wishing everybody, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to come down and help you bring a portable mic if need be. Or Good morning, everybody. My name is Shelly Jones, for the record. And I had the pleasure of meeting Stephanie today, and I do agree with her. I do not see no reason why you can't expand the boundaries. I do have a friend that is totally blind who lives two blocks from the boundary of where the bus stops. And I don't see no reason why the boundaries cannot be expanded to meet everybody's needs, yet the public continuously says, people who are disabled need to be independent. Well, if they're gonna be independent, why can't you take that same challenge and try to make it to the bus stop or have paratransit pick you up at a place where it's not really safe to cross the streets, let alone walk down the sidewalks? Because in the news, it, they constantly tell about people who are waiting at a bus stop and a vehicle 
runs into them. Some die, some end up in the hospital. So that's an unsafe situation. It's unsafe for anybody to leave their house to have to walk to a bus stop. It's unsafe for anybody to leave their house to go to where the paratransit will pick them up. I do not see or understand why a simple decision could be made to expand the boundaries. If you want to and strive for excellence, you cannot have excellence if you do not resolve the issue. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? On the behalf of the board, may you have a happy and healthy Thanksgiving and let's all reflect on what we're thankful for. This meeting is adjourned.